thing, Willow. Like I said, totally under control. Though I think all that bumping did some damage. Audrey, what's her status? Hopscotch, mountain top, shindig valley. Yep, definitely some damage. But it's nothing I can't fix. Okay, which tools am I gonna need? A screwdriver? A wrench? Or whatever this thing is. Thanks, guys, but I got this. Beach giant polos, you play? I'll stay. Yay! <laughs> if you say so. Uh, okay. Goes there. Willow's a great engineer. But what if she can't fix the polo boat? <gasps> we'll all be stuck here forever! Forever! Stay calm, Chester. Get your mind on something else. <laughs> I got it! Oh, a beach ball! I love beach balls! <laughs> this engine is totally seized. It needs a top to bottom rebuild. I found some spare parts below deck. I was saving these to build a dancing robot, but I can do that next week. Ready, Gorby? I got it! I got it! I, I don't got it. Oh! <laughs> Yay! Ball! Ah! Oh, the wind's really starting to blow. Ah, the ball! Ah. All that clanking tells me you don't think any of these will make the engine work again. <sighs> nope, we need something else to get the polo boat moving. I wish the wind would stop. I don't. I'm having an engineering moment. Wow, a sail made out of palm leaves. That's brilliant, Willow. Thanks. Seeing the wind push those leaves around gave me the idea that a whole bunch of leaves could catch a whole bunch of wind to push our boat. The wind will press on the sail and make it puff out. This force will push the puller boat forward, and I'll use these levers to steer. Then it's Bye Bye Island. There's an insect pushing a ball of poop. It looks like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes, they also get water from the dung. Okay. This time, I'm going to say it. Yuck. Where's it going? Yeah, if they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle.
They've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poo, would you? I brought my hat. Here, my hat. You brought it in your backpack? Mm-hmm. Wow, thanks, Nash. High five, buddy. Whoa! Oops. <clears throat> How about I carry that for a bit? <sighs> I'm so hot. Whew. I'm sweaty. I'm hot and sweaty. Oh, I wish I brought some water. Ah, water! Wawa, Wawa, for everybody! Thanks, Nash. Maybe bringing that backpack wasn't such a bad idea. Actually, it's turning out to be a really great idea. Hey, look! Rhinos? They're still a little far. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nash. Yup. Let's go. Don't forget the backpack. I got it, buddy. I'll help. <gasps> Rhinos! We found them! Boy, they're big. One of the biggest land animals. Elephants are the biggest. Rhinos are so big that nothing around here eats them. Uh... What's up with those little birds? It looks like they're pecking at the rhino's backs. Seeding bugs! I think you're right, Nash. The birds are picking bugs off the rhinos and eating them. I've heard of them. They're called oxpeckers. They help the rhinos by keeping them free of bugs. And the rhinos help the oxpeckers by giving them a source of food. No wonder the rhinos let the oxpeckers peck them. They're both getting something they need. Just like Nash helped us out today. Yeah, we never would have made it to see the rhinos without Nash and his backpack. And Nash would have never made it here with his backpack without everyone helping to carry it. I wonder what else he's got in there. <laughs> Whoa! Stuff! Teddy, bouncy ball, helmet, socks, book, flippers. My stuff! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we better help Nash get all of his stuff back into his backpack. And get it all the way back to the polo mobile. Right. Another hot, sweaty, thirsty hike to right over there. We barely left the polo mobile. Oh, you're <laughs> right. <laughs> Go, buddy. Oh no! <sighs> you okay, Nash? Mm -mm. I know. I'm upset too. Maybe we can find a way to help. Help, help, Totals! Clean, clean up! Nash is right. We need to do something about this garbage. Uh huh. Oh yeah. It's cleanup time. I'll get the polo marine. Moko, go there! Over there? Can do. Lily, that way. That way? I'm on it. Chester, Chester! Come here! Huh? Chester, he's saying, come with me. Aha, uh aha! -huh, uh -huh. Why can everyone understand Nash but me? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody clean up, clean up Everybody clean up, clean up Get the mess gone, get your clean on Everybody clean up, clean up It's a great big world 
with a big responsibility And if we work together we can keep our planet clean But the very best way you can help Is to pick up after yourself Then let's go be a clean up team Everybody clean Ocean's a big place, and there's still lots of it to clean up. But we did a great job here. Especially you, Nash. Yeah, we're really proud of you. And Nash, now I hope you understand the importance of cleaning up after yourself. Okay, no swimming with giant otters because they might attack us. Let's take a look underwater. Yeah! Whee! This doesn't look so bad except for that stick. That's not a stick! It's a creature! A deadly one, too! It's an electric eel! An eel that's electric? Seriously? How is that even possible? Electric eels have special body parts that make electricity. They need this to help them hunt prey and defend themselves. What's that? Oh no, there's another one! That's not an eel, that's a snake! A ginormous snake! How many things live down here? Well, anacondas do, right Chester? Yep, they're the biggest snakes in the world. They can grow to be as long as a school bus. That's big. Do they bite? No. They coil their bodies around their prey and drag them into the water to eat them. Cool. But no swimming with anacondas. Absolutely yeah. not. No. How about here? It looks beautiful. No giant otters, no electric eels, no anaconda. Oh, ooh, fishy, fishy. Little fishies, piranha with the sharp teeth that can eat whole animals super fast? Yes, but these red piranhas bark to warn other creatures to stay away from them. Woof, woof, woof. Cute otters that don't want to play? Eels with electricity? Giant anaconda snake that squeezed their prey? And barking piranha fish? The Amazon River doesn't seem like a good place to swim. Yeah, but this is where they live. Their home, not ours. The Amazon belongs to the creatures that live here. Sorry, Lily. Oh, I don't care about the rain. Only I could find some place to swim. If I could just find one place, any place to go swimming today. Well, how about this? I was working on the robo umbrella, but then it started to rain and it turned into a swimming pool. Yay! Thank you, Willa. Cannonball! Who wants to play? Marco Polo. Zebras have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it. It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah, -uh. Here's the third one. The plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. 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 But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natch's zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, 
but it also says that every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Ew. <gasps> Nash is selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning. Scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All yes. right. Then let's go. Wow. So many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, the polo zebra matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! Is it here? Hmm. It doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd. Or this one. Nope. Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators too. That must be why they have stripes. For protection. My zebra! <laughs> Scanning. Scanning. It's a match! That's Nash's zebra! I think Nash already knew that. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. I wish I had stripes. <laughs>